The learning objectives or things you should be able to do at the end of this lesson are as follows. You should be able to construct a position time graph, calculate speed from a position time graph, and describe how motion with constant speed and changing speed appears on a speed time graph. After you watch this video, you should watch the next video on examples of speed time graphs and position time graphs to give you a much better idea of how to tell the difference between the two. This is the introductory lesson, but watch the examples in the following video to really give you a good grasp of the difference between the two. Students often miss questions that involve figures and graphs because they're unfamiliar with how to read the figures and graphs. But if you pay close attention and actually read the information that's given to you, you'll find that reading graphs and interpreting them isn't particularly difficult. The first thing you want to do when you look at any graph is look at the title. Because the title will give you the, pretty much the main idea of what the graph is about. And this one, for example, is a turtle's position versus time. The time is on the x-axis at, x -axis at the bottom. And so you can see that as the time is passing, the turtle is getting farther away or it's going um, away and the units are centimeters. So for example, at 100 seconds, the turtle has gone 200 centimeters. Now, graphs usually show how something changes with time. And each number on the graph has a unit associated with it. On a position time graph, the position is on the y-axis and usually given to you um, in, with a distance. And it's going to have units such as centimeters, meters, or kilometers. Um, seconds, minutes, and days are units of time and are generally shown on the x-axis at the bottom of a graph. All right, so this graph right here is showing you the temperature in Santa Barbara over the course of one day. And you can see that the time is shown on the x-axis from midnight to midnight. You can see from midnight to around uh, about 8 o'clock in the morning, the temperature was decreasing. And then the sun came up and then, of course, it got warmer. So you can see a sharp increase in the temperature uh, during the daylight hours. And then before it gets dark again and the temperature goes down. So which brings us to our discussion of slope on a position time graph. And the steepness of a line on the graph is called the slope. Right? And so the steeper the slope, the faster the object is moving. Here you can see a graph of a red line and a green line. And the red line is steeper than the green line. So if this was two turtles, let's say we had a red turtle and a green turtle, uh, over this course of time here, which is, looks like 200 seconds, the red turtle went a greater distance. And so if the, great, the red turtle went a greater distance in the same amount of time, that's to tell us that that turtle was moving faster. And that's why the red line has a greater slope. Now, when you graph a line, you can estimate the time or the position in any amount of time that's on that graph. So here we have time in increments of 20 so, or 40. You have 0, 40, 80, 120, 160, and 200 at the bottom of the graph. And you can see that at, say, for example, at 200 uh, seconds, the turtle had gone, or the red turtle had gone, 400 centimeters. But what if they wanted to know um, what the turtle did around, let's say, uh, about 100 uh, seconds, and which will be right here in between 80 and 120. And you can see that right in there, about halfway between them, the turtle went about 200 centimeters. So you can guesstimate for other or estimate for other values that aren't plotted on the line. All right, so let's say you want to find the slope. All right, you may have covered this in math class. So uh, if we take 
if we plot a point on a graph and you can see that this is a graph of a car moving at constant speed shown by the red line and there's a dot point plotted in the center okay so if you go over to three seconds and then go up 60 meters you can see that there is a dot there all right so if you want to calculate the slope you calculate the slope by doing the rise which is how high the value rises on the y-axis divided by the run which is how far it goes on the x-axis so the, our rise would be 60 because it goes up to 60 and our run would be 3 Okay, and so to calculate our slope, slope, we simply do rise divided by run. Okay, 60 divided by 3 would be 20. So our slope in this example would be 20 because our rise, which is 60, divided by our run, which is 3, is 20. Now, which is interesting because you'll notice that our rise is the distance we've gone. And the run is the time that it takes. So that's distance divided by time gives us, our, gives us our slope. And if you remember from our last video, you will remember that average speed is equal to the distance divided by time. And that's no coincidence. So when you graph something, the slope or on a position time graph, the slope is the average speed. So if you see a graph and you're asked to find the average speed of the object that's being graphed, then you would just simply find the slope. Now, when objects are graphed and the lines are straight like these, and that's to say they're diagonal, but they're still straight, that means that the objects are traveling at a constant speed. So for every interval of time, the object is moving at the same speed. But sometimes objects aren't traveling at a uh, constant speed. Sometimes the line will be curved and you can still find the average speed by graphing the origin as your starting point and then wherever your ending point is and then drawing a straight line because or through those points as if it were straight. So in doing this you can calculate the average speed over the course of the whole trip because if you do it this way, you can still calculate the rise over the run. In this case, we have a rise of 10 kilometers and a run of 10 minutes. So our slope would be 1, and our average speed in this graph would be 1 kilometer per minute. Okay, because that's our rise over our run. Now, all the graphs we've talked about so far have been position time graphs but on speed time graphs you have to pay attention and read the graph carefully because they're telling us something different so for example in this graph this is showing us on the x-axis as time is passing this is showing us the speed of two different cars let's say we have a red car and a blue car now let's say for example our blue car was traveling at 10 miles per hour which would be our speed and our and our red car was traveling at 20 miles an hour. You can see that for any given time, the blue car is traveling at 10 miles per hour or at the same amount of speed. So is the red car. So on a speed time graph, constant speed is shown as a straight line. Now, you might remember on a position time graph, the constant speed was shown as a line that uh, slanted up towards the right. So in the next video, we're going to compare speed time graphs and position time graphs to give you a comparison. But if you read the graph carefully and pay attention to what's happening over time, you will find it easier to determine what's happening. All right. So continuing with the speed time graphs, you'll see here that as time is passing, again, let's say I have a red car and a blue car and they're slanted towards the right, this means that these objects are speeding up because as time passes, the speed is increasing. Now, the steeper the line, the faster the car is speeding up or the object. And so this case, the red car would be speeding up at a faster rate than the blue car. 
and you'll remember that we can call this acceleration. So the red car will be accelerating at a faster rate than the blue car. And conversely, if we look at lines that are slanted down, you will see that that means that the car is decelerating or the acceleration is happening uh, in the negative direction. But in this case, you can see that the blue car is decelerating at a much faster pace, so it's slowing down faster than the red car. But again, take time to watch the next video where we closely compare the difference between position time graphs and speed time graphs and it'll give you a better idea of how to discern the difference and read graphs properly. You should now be able to achieve these learning objectives. Read over them and make sure you can do them. If not, go back, look at the video again until you are, until you are able to achieve these learning objectives.